Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for Denmark for EU4 1.31 Leviathan. If you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 20% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today. So Denmark is a nation in Northern Europe and it starts off with three subjects, Holstein, Norway and Sweden. Holstein is a vassal and Norway and Sweden are personal unions. So definitely a very powerful nation in 1444. But we're still not on the great powers list. We'll fix that pretty soon though. Denmark is a very fun nation to play and you can dominate Northern Europe in no time and have a massive, massive trade empire with a very powerful army and especially navy. So let's take a look at what you need to do as Denmark. Of course we don't have a lot of unique missions, this is something that Scandinavia lacks, hopefully we'll get a DLC for it soon. Either way we will start off our expansion with our tiny mission tree. First we need to build the 90% of our navy force limit so we get claims over here in the Livonian order. So that is exactly what we're gonna do. But first let's set some rivals. And just rival whoever rivaled you. I'm gonna rival the Ottomans, England and Lithuania we will lose the ability to be rivaled to Lithuania and the Ottomans pretty soon. So we'll find some new ones. It's not a big deal. Next, we're going to go into our estates and summon the diet. You can choose whichever agenda is best for you. We're going to give the clergy religious state and clerical advisory council. We're going to give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies and aristocratic counselors. We can't give out strong duchies because remember, we only have one vassal. Norway and Sweden are personal union subjects. Then you should activate the encouraged development state edict in your capital state. And Dev Finn, once in production. I'm actually gonna dev this province right here because that's what my estate mission is. But you should dev this one right here. Next we're gonna give the burghers land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebt it to the burghers. Once we pay off these loans and get rid of this privilege, we are gonna take private trade fleets. As Denmark, you can really select any naval doctrine that you like depending on what you wanna focus on. You should pick free oarsmen if you're mainly gonna focus on the Baltic. You should pick merchant navy if you want to play tall and focus on trade, and shipboarding is always a good idea. This one is also good too, but we don't really need that minus 15% naval maintenance since we will be making a lot of money. Personally, I'm gonna go for shipboarding, but like I said, either of them is good. We can't sell titles or seize land because we still have rebels right here. But once we take care of them, we will do both of those things. Next, we're gonna hire some advisors. I'm gonna get this national tax guy. Get an improved relations or a diplo rep guy if you have him. I'm gonna take this diplo rep guy. And a morale or discipline guy is always great, but I don't have him, so I'm gonna take this manpower guy. Next, we're gonna build one more galley in this fleet right here. Let's call it the Baltic fleet. And we're gonna build two more light ships in this fleet over here. Let's call it the trade fleet. And now we're gonna wait for these ships to finish building and we're gonna send these guys to protect trade in Lubeck and go home during war. We're also gonna build six more infantry regiments over here though on these lands. There we go. Now we need to wait for these guys to get over here as we can see they're already on their way. Then we're gonna take care of them and go siege back Gotland. And we're gonna give our ruler military command until we have some extra mil points to get a general. This guy's not that good. He's a 322 and he's infertile. With one of our diplomats we're gonna improve with Sweden. With the other one we're gonna improve with Norway. And with the last one we're gonna try and get some allies. I'm gonna ally Brandenburg in my case. One ally is enough until you get a free diplo slot. And once this guy comes back we're gonna improve with Holstein and Royal Mary them first of course. Now we just need to wait for these ships until we can declare on the Livonians. Now that these pretend rebels have arrived here, it's time to fight them. And of course once you've defeated them, you can send 7 infantry regiments to go siege back Gotland. We're still waiting on our ships. And there we go, once our ships have finished building, we can unlock the mission, the Baltic Fleet. You should have also unlocked this one by now. This gives us a claim in these areas. And once we're done sieging Gotland, we're gonna be declaring on the Livonian Order. The only nations that they really ally are Riga and the Teutons, just like in my case right here. It is gonna be an annoying war since these nations do have a lot of forts, but it's not gonna be difficult. You can also try and ask Novgorod for military access so you can walk around like this without having to naval disembark. Once you're done sieging down Gotland, move your army to Viborg right here. Even if Novgorod doesn't give you military access to walk into the Livonians from over here, you can just naval land from here to here. And of course once we've sieged back Gotland, we're also gonna sell titles and seize land. At this point you can also hire an admiral. 
Once your army is in Viborg and you have asked Novgorod for military access, that's not really necessary like I said, it is time to declare on the Livonian Order. And like I said, they will usually only be allied to Riga and the Teutons. During this time you might want to check if you can co-belligerent the Teutonic Order, and usually you will be able to do so since the only nation they also ally is the Livonian Order. This happens in like 99% of the games. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do in my case, co-belligerent the Teutons, and I'm gonna call in Brandenburg with the promise of land. They'll help me out over here. This isn't something that's necessary, and you don't have to do it if you can't. And now we're gonna declare on them. During this point, Sweden may become a bit disloyal because we're at war and they think they're a bit stronger than us. If they do so, you can just enable support loyalists. And by the time you improve up to 200, they won't be disloyal anymore and you can just turn this off. During this time, we're also gonna start spying on Novgorod. At this point, I did also just recruit one more general. And you can also set Scotland as provinces of interest so Norway might start building claims on them. And I just got down sieging down the Teutons. I pieced out Riga for war reps, ducats, transfer trade power, and I knelt some alliances. And this is what we're gonna take from Lithuania in the peace deal. Basically, we're gonna take these provinces like this, so we can basically surround them and prevent anyone else from declaring on them, such as Muscovy or Poland-Lithuania. If you did co-belligerent the Teutons, I do recommend taking the province of Danzig from them. But that's it. Anything else and it will be too much aggressive expansion. So, either take these provinces from the Livonian Order, and Danzig, or just these provinces from the Livonian Order. I am gonna take Danzig, and I'm also gonna take all their money. And that's our first war done. Now during this time, like I said, you should have been building a spy network on Novgorod, and if Muscovy haven't taken these provinces, and they shouldn't have yet, you are gonna make a claim on, well, one of these two if you can. In my case, I can make a claim on both of them. And now we're gonna get ready for a second war, which is going to be precisely against Novgorod. Of course, that depends on what Muscovy takes. You can also add these provinces as provinces of interest up here in hopes that Sweden will build a spy network on them, just like we did with Scotland in the hopes that Norway will spy on them. I do also recommend deleting the fort on Gotland. Now it's time for a second war and like I said, it's gonna be against Novgorod. Now in your case, Muscovy may or may not have already declared on them. In my case, they have already fought them and they've taken some provinces. Either way, that doesn't matter because what we're gonna be focusing on in this first war against Novgorod is stopping Muscovy from expanding even more. Basically, we're gonna be taking all the border provinces that Novgorod has with Muscovy to prevent them from pushing even more. And then in the second war, we can full annex them. You're gonna be doing this no matter how big Novgorod is. Even if they're their original size, you're gonna want to take as much provinces along the border with Muscovy. Now in my case here, Novgorod is allied to Lithuania, and chances are in your game they probably won't be. But this happened because in my game, Poland chose the local noble instead, so they don't have Lithuania as a junior partner. So I'm gonna have to fight Lithuania as well. I'm gonna focus on taking them out quickly, so I can get back to focusing on Novgorod. In your case, when you fight Novgorod, they're probably not gonna have any allies at all. So now it's time to declare on them. I'm gonna declare for never right here. At this point, you should also start focusing on admin because we will be working on an admin idea group first. Of course, only if you've already gotten Miltek 4. If you haven't, wait until you get it and then start focusing on admin. At this point, I can peace out Lithuania and I would have white pieced them or taking their money, but I did notice that they were my rival. So I am gonna take all their money, war reps and humiliate them as well. And there we go, I full siege Novgorod, and like I said, I am gonna be taking the border provinces from them. It is quite a lot of aggressive expansion, but there are so few orthodox nations over here that it's not actually gonna be a problem. I'm also gonna take as much money as I can and leave these provinces for the second war. If you can't go all the way up the border with Muscovy, take something like this perhaps. Muscovy will still be able to get through, but it is what it is. Of course now we will continue to spy on Novgorod and get claims on even more provinces and now it's time to chill a bit and integrate our subject Holstein because 10 years have passed since the start of the game. For your second government reform you should take strength and noble privileges. During this time of peace in this region you might want to check if Scotland is still allied to France, in my case they are. But we can see that France is pretty close to not joining the war if I declare on Scotland. So if in your case they're not allied or they're not being guaranteed by France, or if France won't join, you might want to take this opportunity to declare on Scotland, with the claims that Norway has built up on them, because we did add them as provinces of interest. I'm not gonna be doing it in my case, because of course France would join, but if France starts a war with someone over here, I think that would be a good opportunity 
for me to declare. Meanwhile, during this point, we are annexing Holstein and we're letting aggressive expansion die down a little bit. Our next target will probably be the Teutons or the Livonians if it's not Scotland. Here's a little funny thing that happened. Saluzzo just got the Burgundian inheritance in my game. That's uh, it's gonna be interesting for sure. Just wanted to show you guys. During this time, if you're ahead of tech in any category, and if you still haven't gotten the Renaissance, it is a good idea to dev up Copenhagen just a bit so we can get it up to 30 dev for the age objective and so we can speed up the growth of the Renaissance. There we go. By this point you will also have unlocked marketplaces and churches and it is a good time to start building marketplaces in the center of trade provinces. At the start we have one right here and right here and we also just got one in Holstein because we did integrate them and you can also build them in your subjects provinces with centers of trade as well because they will become ours when we integrate them. We have one in Neva right too which we should have by now and some over here if you've taken provinces from the Teutons. By this point we should have paid off the loans from indebted to the burghers so now it is a good time to get private trade fleets. If you're not that confident in your money making ability, don't take it because you will want to take indebted to the burgers every now and then. But I feel like after this point I shouldn't have any money problems so I am gonna give them private trade fleets. For your first stage ability, you can get Danish subject loyalty if you're not that confident in your ability of keeping Sweden loyal. If you're fine with Sweden always being at like 20 to 30% liberty desire, you can choose something else such as justified wars or transfer subject. In my case, I don't feel like I need Danish subject loyalty, so I am gonna take justified wars. During this point you may get the strategic marriage event where you can choose to end this conflict and basically give these two provinces over here that Norway owns to Scotland and we get a royal marriage with Scotland. But if you choose this option, Norway gets a permanent claim on the Outer Hebrides and Sutherland. Of course, we're gonna choose the second option. For your first idea group as Denmark, I recommend taking economic ideas. This will help us boost our weak-ish economy at the start. The minus 10% construction cost is great. We have another minus 15 in our national ideas and it will give us some other nice modifiers that will focus on our trade empire and some nice policies as well. If you do wanna go colonial, it's still not the time to pick exploration and expansion. We can't reach any provinces in the new world yet, at least until we integrate Norway. So even if you do go colonial, it's still not the time for exploration and expansion. I recommend economic. And of course, once your truce with the Livonians has run out, it is time to declare on them once again. Just as I did that, Estonia actually popped out over here, which is pretty funny. I am immediately gonna declare on them as well, since they don't have any allies. Either way, it's just something funny that happened. And there we go, I full annexed Lithuania and funnily enough, Estonia too. You should have done the same in your case, and now you could fulfill the mission Conquer Osel. It gives us claims on Lubeck, Neva, and Danzig. Now, if the Teutons still exist, it is time to declare on them. In your case, this might be owned by Danzig by now, if Poland got the event for Danzig. They wouldn't have gotten it if you have it yourself. So I am gonna declare on the Teutons now in my situation. If the Teutons don't exist, you can release them as a vassal. And now that I'm done with that, I am actually gonna be vassalizing the Teutonic Order. If they're pretty big and there's no point in vassalizing them other than saving admin points, you could full annex them. But I am gonna vassalize them because in my case they do have a bunch of cores that Poland owns right now. And there we go, by this point, the Livonians and the Teutons shouldn't exist. Or, well, they shouldn't be independent, at least. Now it's time for our second war against Novgorod. At this point, I did also delete the fort in Revel and in Lund. For my second age ability, I am gonna take Danish subject loyalty. If you took this one as your first, you can take this one now. And once your truce with Novgorod is up, it is time for your second war against them, where you're gonna take, well, basically everything, or maybe not, depending on how big they were in the first war. I'm gonna declare for Never right here, and I am gonna have to fight Lithuania again, unfortunately. It's always nice when you trap the AI on an island. And like I said, in the second war against Novgorod, you're once again gonna take as much as you can. The aggressive expansion doesn't matter because they're orthodox. In my case, I can full annex them. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. 
and that's our second war against them done. Now we've defeated all the weaker nations, so it's time to focus on the stronger ones. Now that we've taken care of the weak nations, such as the Livonian Order, the Teutonic Order, and Novgorod, it's time to focus on a medium or strong nation. Now strong nations you need to fight are Muscovy and Poland-Lithuania, and a medium nation is Scotland. In your case you may have already fought Scotland if they weren't allied or guaranteed by France, and in my case that just happened. They aren't allied or guaranteed by France. Now at this point you are strong enough to quickly take out Scotland before France even gets to you. So if France are allied or guaranteeing Scotland you will still declare, but you may not take anything and you will just want to dissolve Scotland's alliance with France. Or if they're guaranteed just take a province or two. You will be able to blitz Scotland before France gets to you. Now that might enable England to attack Scotland later, but if they get full annexed you can just release them and use them to reconquer their course. So it's not a problem even if England declare later on and take most of the stuff you want. But in my case they aren't allied with France anymore so I am gonna declare on them. Of course using Norway's permanent claims that they got from the event or regular claims that they got because you set these provinces as provinces of interest. Now you still don't have heavy ships at this point probably so just keep your fleet in this sea tile until you cross but then dock them back because Scotland might defeat you if they have heavy ships. For your third government reform I do recommend taking decentralized bureaucracy. We are gonna want to promote some high development cultures later such as English and maybe some East Slavic ones too or North German ones. And once you've sieged down Scotland, and like I said, if they're allied to France, you're just gonna wanna take, well, as much as you can without actually getting involved with France, or maybe dissolving their alliance with France, that's something you're gonna wanna do. But if they're not allied to France, well, you're just gonna wanna take basically as much as possible. I'm gonna take these provinces up here, along with all their money, and if the rest of their provinces get annexed by England, I might just release them again and use them for a reconquest. Or I might declare on England directly with claims. And that's about what your first war with Scotland should look like, depending on if they were allied to France or not. And once you've dealt with Scotland, it is time to declare on the two biggest rivals that we have right now, Poland-Lithuania or Muscovy, depending on who looks weaker. In my case, Muscovy is pretty big and they do still have a couple of subjects, and Poland is only allied to Lithuania, so in my case, it is better to declare on Poland. Either way, if you declare on Muscovy, what you are gonna wanna focus on is some provinces in the Novgorod trade node with some centers of trade or provinces in the White Sea trade node up here. Basically, you can take as much as you want versus as Muscovy. If you're fighting Poland-Lithuania, however, you are gonna want to focus on provinces in the Baltic Sea trade node. These provinces up here. If you vassalize the Livonians or Teutons, you can use their cores to reconquer them from Poland-Lithuania. There's also a bunch of good nations to release from Lithuania, such as Polotsk in this area right here. They have a couple of cores on these provinces. Then you have Cheringov in some provinces over here. You have Kiev in provinces down here. You have galicia volhynia in provinces over here. And there's a ton of nations to release in this region right here. If you want to push that far this soon though. In my case, I'm just going to be declaring on them and taking taking back the Teuton scores. You may be fighting Muscovy if they look weaker in your case. For your second idea group, I do recommend taking quality ideas. This will help out our army a lot since we don't have any army focused national ideas except for that plus 10% morale and it will help our navy quite a lot as well because we are going to be focusing on it as well since we are Denmark after all. So quality ideas for your second idea group. And now that I've defeated Poland-Lithuania, I'm gonna be giving back all of the Teuton scores to them. And I'm also gonna be taking some money. To be honest, this was a pretty difficult war, but you can definitely come out on top. And that's our first war against them, done. Now I have some separatist problems, so I need to deal with that. You should be chilling as well, and getting ready to declare your second war against Scotland, or your first war against Muscovy. And by around the 1490s, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we've defeated the first nations that we wanted to, the Livonian Order and the Teutonic Order, you may have vassalized some of them. We've also defeated Novgorod, you might have taken more from them, or a little less in your case, it doesn't really matter. And we've defeated Scotland at least once, and established 
established are a very important foothold in Great Britain, you also might have fought Muscovy or Poland and Lithuania and taken some provinces from them too. Like I said, from Muscovy, take as much as you can. From Poland and Lithuania, you initially want to focus on the Baltic Sea trade node. Then you can keep pushing down if that is your goal, of course. After this point, you will continue to expand in the same directions, basically continuing to take out Poland and Lithuania and pushing as far as you want to, and doing the same with Muscovy before they grow too powerful, of course. And the most important place where we want to expand is actually the British Isles, taking down Scotland first and then England as well. You don't want to get involved in fighting the HRE, at least not until the wars of the Protestant League happen. And of course, you will want to join on the side opposite of the Emperor. So you will probably join the Protestant side. Speaking of that, you will want to go Protestant as Denmark, in my opinion. So that's something to keep in mind. Of course, we will focus on dominating trade. You will want to move your main trade node to the English Channel once you have a big enough portion of it. Lubick is pretty good too, at least for this part of the game. You will want to integrate Sweden as soon as you can, and you might want to leave Norway around so they can colonize a bit for you, but if that's not your thing, you can integrate them as well, and you could even do your own colonization. Speaking of colonization, after taking economic and quality, if you want to colonize, now is the time to take exploration and expansion. If you don't want to colonize, I recommend taking trade for your third idea group, and then quantity for your fourth idea group. After that, it's pretty pretty much your choice. But if you do go colonial, after you take exploration and expansion, then you want to take trade and quantity. The final two are your choice. For your tier 4 government reform, you're going to want to take meritocratic recruitment. For tier 5, I recommend general estates to maximize even more money-making potential. For tier 6, you should take the Tassemois, and for tier 7, you should take political absolutism. And of course, you will want to construct marketplaces in all the center of trade provinces, workshops in all the high-value trade good provinces, such as iron, copper. There aren't a lot of them in this region, so you will want to move into England, Scotland, and Ireland and build some in their cloth provinces. Once you start taking over North Germany, there's lots of high value trade goods over there as well. And if you want to, you can even trade company some lands in the White Sea, Novgorod, Kiev and so on. They are on a different subcontinent than our capital. If you colonize, you will want to focus mostly on North America. Of course, don't forget to focus on your navies as Denmark. It is very important. Get a couple of trade fleets to protect trade in Lubeck, in the Baltic Sea, in the North Sea, in the English Channel. Those are the main trade nodes you want to focus on protecting. You could even send one up to the White Sea and Novgorod. It's really not a problem. Make sure you have a nice Baltic fleet with galleys and transports situated over here so you can quickly move around and dominate the Baltic with your galleys and get another fleet over here. Maybe you could use the same one, build up some heavies too. That is pretty important. Of course, if you colonize, you are going to want to get three light ships for your explorer to go exploring. Denmark has two unique achievements, the Iron Price, where you need to restore the Danelaw region to Danish rule and make it Danish culture. That's uh, pretty much these provinces right here in England, I think. So those are the East Anglia, East Midlands, Yorkshire, and a couple of provinces in Northern England as well. So you will conquer that from England anyway, and if you want that achievement, you're gonna have to change their culture as well. And then we also have Ostindisk Company Te, where as Denmark, you need to establish a trade company and have at least 10% market share in tea. For that, you're gonna need to conquer Southern China. It is a pretty fun achievement, but you will have to play way into the late game. If you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe since only 20% of you are subscribed and you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.